Ian Howard Cheeseman was born on the 4th of November, 1937, in Crawley, West Sussex, England. His childhood was spent doing the things children love to do, playing with friends, visiting neighboring farms, and collecting frogs' eggs, watching them turn into tadpoles and then young frogs. He traveled to school by double-decker bus with other children and walked home with his mother, often picking up some goodie from the bakery on the way. In 1939, everything changed when World War II began, and in 1940 and 1941, the Blitz in London, just miles from his home, meant that he spent nights with his mother and grandmother in an air raid shelter dug into the earth at the bottom of the garden. Later in the war, he would sit up in his bedroom and look to the east in the evening so he could watch any doodle bugs flying bombs on their way to London. They were easy to see as they spewed fire out of their tails. Those childhood experiences of the war had a profound effect on him, and for the rest of his life, he thought about them, talked about them, and remembered them. Armistice Day on the 11th of November held a particularly special and poignant place in his heart because he had lived through that war and was so thankful to all of those who had given their lives to provide the freedom we all enjoy. In 1949, Ian moved with his parents and brothers, Peter and Stuart, to London, Ontario, Canada. Although Ian had a first-rate mind, he was not very interested in or challenged by school. So in 1953, he started work in Wonder Bakeries, and interspersed with his studies, he continued to work there on and off over the next few years. During 1955 and 1956, his mother returned to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which she had been a member of earlier in her life in England. Through her influence, the rest of the family joined the church over the next few years, and Ian went to Oshawa Missionary College in Oshawa, Ontario, now Kingsway College, to finish his high school and junior college studies. He was a bit of a self-proclaimed rebel during those first few years at the college and did things like play Elvis Presley very loudly out of his car window and eat fish and chips, which were frowned upon by the vegetarian promoting church. On the 3rd of February, 1963, Dorothy graduated from nurse's training in the morning, becoming a registered nurse, and married Ian in the evening, becoming a wife and lifelong partner. Dorothy worked in Ann Arbor, Michigan, while Ian finished his master's in history at Andrews University. Ian and Dorothy then became missionaries traveling to Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, where Ian taught history, geography, English, and a class on African animals. Dorothy ran an obstetrics clinic, delivering the babies of native women who would travel for miles on foot to deliver their babies. Lorena was born in their first year there, and Jeffrey, their son, was born two years later. Ian and Dorothy worked in Africa, moving from Lower Guelo Mission to Inyazura Secondary School, and then to Rusangu Secondary School in Zambia. They spent eight years in Africa, and then returned to Canada to work at Kingsley College. While they were at Kingsway College, they had another daughter, Kimberly. In 1982, Ian took a call to be principal of Fraser Valley Adventist Academy in Aldergrove, British Columbia. Ian was fond of the staff and students and was known as the Big Chief. He also worked hard to improve the school. In 1987, the family moved to Lacombe, Alberta, and Ian began to work in the English department at Parkview Adventist Academy. During this time, Ian suffered through a period of intense mental distress, which resulted in him leaving the teaching profession for a short time. After a year working in the furniture factory, Ian became the men's dean at CUC, which he really enjoyed. Ian, Dorothy, and Kim left Lacombe in 1990 and moved to St. John's, Newfoundland, where he became principal of the St. John's Seventh-day Adventist Academy. His years there were happy and many students will remember a big man with a bomber jacket at the front of Crack the Whip at the ice skating rink down the road during PE. He loved the students and worked with great staff members there. The next adventure was a move to Hawaii. He, Dorothy, and Kim moved to the island of Molokai. Ian was pastor of the church and principal and teacher of grades five to eight. Despite the responsibility of this heavy workload, Ian found time to golf with his son Jeffrey, relax at the Westside Resort, and listen to his favorite bagpipes. After a walk one day, Ian did not feel good. 
the decision was made to fly over to Oahu to see the doctor. Ian needed and received a quadruple bypass surgery. After eight years in Hawaii, both he and Dorothy retired from full-time work. In 2001, Dorothy and Ian moved to Shrewsbury, Shropshire in England and were able to spend some time with their daughter, Kim, who had graduated from Newbold College. Ian became the pastor of the Shrewsbury and Telford churches and greatly enjoyed his time there and the lovely people that he met there. Many of them have stayed in touch and are dear friends and some are even in-laws. In 2003, after they had seen Kim safely married, Dorothy and Ian decided to return to Canada and settled into life in Victoria, British Columbia. They were happy to move to the island and be able to spend time with their daughter, Lorena, son-in-law, Philip, and granddaughter, Kelsey. In 2006, tragically, Ian was diagnosed with bladder cancer. With the love and help of Dorothy, he bravely fought the disease and after radiation therapy and chemotherapy, he recovered and is, was in remission for several happy years. During those years, he traveled to England often to see Kim and her, her husband, Chris, and they traveled to Italy, Turkey, and France together. They also traveled to Michigan to see their son, Jeffrey, and his wife, Karen, and had countless visits to and from friends and family. In 2013, Ian's cancer returned, and once again, he had chemotherapy, which held the cancer at bay for a time. In May 2017, he met his new granddaughter, Ada, and in 2019, was able to meet his brand new grandson, Charlie, who he bounced on his knee for hours. 2020 has been a terrible year for many reasons. The political situation in many countries has been dire, and the global pandemic brought about by COVID-19 has meant that people have lost their livelihoods and their ability to see loved ones. It was these things in part, but also that a beloved father's cancer had spread that devastated Ian's family, as they had to cancel trips to visit him. In the end, Dorothy was able to be with Ian at the hospital and Lorena, Philip and Kelsey were able to say goodbye in person. His family are grateful for that, but terribly sad that they could not all be there. Ian Howard Cheeseman died on the 7th of November, 2020. He was a loving husband, a wonderful father and grandfather who we all miss more than we can express. He touched many people's lives, friends, pupils, and colleagues. We will miss his bone crushing handshakes, his bone crushing hugs, his love of all things World War II, his ability to recall any date from history and its significance, but mostly how much he loved us and how gentle and kind he was.